Hi, I'm Sherri Ann Bowling from Code Climate. We're proud to be a Platinum sponsor, and today I'm going to be demoing how Velocity can help your engineering org align, deliver, and improve. Code Climate empowers software engineering organizations to achieve excellence across people, process, and code with data-driven insights. Our engineering intelligence products are trusted by thousands of organizations from enterprises to startups, and we envision a world where engineering organizations and technology executives are empowered to drive innovation with transparency, efficiency, and alignment. We'll be walking through some of Velocity's most popular reports to align engineering initiatives with strategic priorities, accelerate software delivery, and drive continuous improvement. When we talk about driving improvement to productivity, what we're really talking about is output and speed. On the output side of things, we can use pull request throughput as a proxy for value being delivered. Each pull request represents a unit of work that has some value, whether it's implementing a feature, fixing a bug, or improving a part of the code base. Thus, a total count of merged pull requests can serve as a proxy for value being delivered. Having an understanding of output and the direction it's trending helps you see whether changes to the team are having the expected impact. This is a success metric, uh, to communicate progress both within and outside of the engineering organization. We can also add events here, any kind of reorganization, tooling change, or hiring initiative, for example, so we can see the impact of the changes we are making. A couple quick things to note before we walk through more of the application. Right now, we are looking at all contributors' data. In Velocity, you have the ability to create teams, nest teams, and put people on multiple different teams at the same time. This allows you to slice the data in multiple different ways, be it by creating a new hire team or a location-based team, et cetera. Anytime you see a metric underlined, you can scroll over it and click learn more. You'll be able to view not only a definition of why it matters, but how to use it, and you can also view benchmark data. As I mentioned earlier, we have thousands of customers using our tools. This will show you how the top quartile is performing. If you're not sure where to drive improvements, this can be a great place to look and also learn about each metric. We talked a bit about output. On the other side of productivity, the first step to improving development speed is measuring how fast you've been historically and, of course, identifying bottlenecks in your processes. We look at cycle time, which encapsulates the time between first commit to when a PR is merged to production. This metric is a great success metric to gut check how your team's efficiency is improving. As a next step, Velocity breaks down cycle time into its constituent parts to point you to specific areas for improvement in your process. Time to open is a proxy for how long it takes to write a unit of work. It is measured by the first commit on a branch to PR open. Time to merge, conversely, is a proxy for how long the review process is taking. It is measured by the time it takes for a PR to go from open to merged. When you see this U-shape, it can indicate that there may be commonalities among these pieces of work that are taking substantially longer than your typical process and best practices. We can drill down throughout the application to see exactly which pieces of work this is coming from. Of course, you need context here um, as you're looking through. Maybe this had to take, you know, 165 hours, 200 hours to go through the review process. More likely, there are common issues that folks are running into. So now we have the data to drive conversations. We only went through uh, four plus metrics um, so far. There are 50 plus metrics in Velocity, and once you're familiar with them, our analytics report provides the ability to create custom dashboards to test hypotheses and see correlations. So for example, let's say I have a gut instinct that time to merge or review process is more highly correlated with our cycle time than say our time to open or time spent writing code. I can select all three metrics customize the filters and groupings here, and then toggle on and off those metrics. So let's go ahead and do that now. I 
I can also drill down here to see team data by contributor, application, repository, issue, epic type, sprint, among other ways to view this data. Now, our 360 reports help engineering managers with coaching. They're going to boost performance by identifying opportunities and giving them a complete picture of both their developers and teams work habits and behaviors on a real time and historical basis. Here they get a sense of who and what teams need help from more than one on one gut feelings and conversations. If I go ahead and select an individual, I can look at a snapshot of their activity. The snapshot points you to work that might need your attention by giving you a view into any active work that might be either long running, has a lot of back and forth in review, or maybe it's a very large piece of work. Today, most managers have to dig through to find commits or PRs in need of help, and here it's accessible for you. The activity tab will allow you to visualize how your developers spend their time by giving you a visual representation of developers' work habits over the past weeks. The big question to ask here is, does a developer's work habits or behaviors match your expectations for how and what they should be working on? The size of the shapes here are the size of the activity, and in this case, it would be the size of the commit. The foundations tab will help you drive continuous process improvements across your teams and people by quantifying key aspects of the software development lifecycle. Questions that can be answered from this tab are, does a dev have the time in their week to actually write code? Are they frequently multitasking? Do their PRs suffer from lots of back and forth? You know, are they actively participating in PR review process? This is, in addition, a great report to help with onboarding. By adjusting the settings here, we can see how this individual is ramping up to the rest of their team in their first three months. And where we can provide training and guidance. We can also click in to see how trends and specific pieces of work are driving these numbers. At the team level, we can see these same reports and some additional ones as well. At the team level, the activity tab gives visibility into how work is spread out across the team. Is something like review falling on just one person if we expect you know, more team members to be involved? Is the team overloaded or could we be putting more on their plate? We can also click on traceable at the top here to see whether there is an excess of unplanned work happening. So work that isn't connected to say JIRA. At the team level, foundations can be used to standardize processes and share successes across teams. If I notice my team is struggling in a specific area compared to the rest of the org, I can have a chat with other managers, determine what their team is doing differently and where we might want to implement some changes. Now, once you've become familiar with your team's baseline and have found opportunities for improvement, you'll need a system for setting goals and measuring progress towards them. A strong goal setting system is imperative for keeping yourself and your team accountable for changing behavior and also improving. Now, the way to think about targets is as a threshold system. We can use them to drive conversations with the team during retros and one-on-ones. So as an example, I'll create a target now to surface pieces of work whose time to merge, again, that's the review process, is taking more than 72 hours. We can see exactly where we have exceeded our team's process best practices, and we have the data to back conversations about these pieces of work on an ongoing basis.
You'll also see work that might have been closed without merging. So work your teams doing that you're not really getting anything out of. So we've really only touched the surface today on what Velocity can do for your team. If you want to see more of Velocity and what your data looks like so you can align, deliver, and improve, please reach out. We'd love to chat more with you.